All right, so we heard a rumor that they're skating at the rink this morning. You guys excited? Yeah. yeah. Mail call. Now, if you're a Canadian knife maker and you're looking to buy knife making materials, knifemaker.ca, Robin Maryland there, they do such an amazing job. Uh, they're like one of my favorite companies by far. Super great service, excellent shipping. They don't ship to the US from what I understand, but for all those in Canada, and I get a lot of questions, uh, people asking where I get my materials, knifemaker.ca. Sweet. I've, I've never used these Corby bolts. Uh, you can use these in lieu of like like pins that you put through. So there are these bolts are threaded. You you pinch your scales together. Uh, you kind of you, you glue them. Then you put these together, bolt them together, and then you just grind the heads off those slots that are in there. You grind those off, and it looks just like a regular pin. I uh, got some brass and stainless. I'm excited to give these a try. Okay, this is cool. This is glow in the dark material, moon glow. Uh, this one's ice blue, I do believe. That's gonna be a real cool spacer on a knife. Uh, this stuff, apparently when it's fully charged, it will glow for 48 hours, so that's gonna be kind of fun. This is uh, black G10 and carbon fiber layered scale material. This should be pretty cool. And then I got a whole bunch of liner material. Blue, yellow, white, ooh, a purple. That'll be fun. And then some black. Now, I was waiting on this to finish this knife right here. I, I talked about this, I think it was a Tool Time Tuesday, and I'm doing a build video on this blade. I wanna do a multi-handled uh, handle material for, for the scales, and I was waiting for this liner to come in so that I could glue my different pieces to this and then put it all together. I'm excited about that. So it's always a good day when you get materials in the mail, and uh, I, yeah, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Canadian Knife Maker Supply, uh, knifemaker.ca fantastic people to deal with. So one thing when you get into regular videos is uh, batteries, you always are charging batteries. And one system I found works really good. It's a number of my batteries, I've got three of them for my little camera. My GX7 II. If I label all my batteries, I use them in sequential order. That way I get even wear and tear on all the batteries and I keep them all charged up so roughly they all have the same amount of cycles on them. In theory, I'm hoping it's going to make them last longer. I do the exact same thing with my big batteries too. Also in the mail, um, I got this, well this was a couple days ago. This more a chisel ground knife. Now, I saw Wrangler Star going on and on about how wonderful this thing was, and I looked at it on Amazon, and I forgot that I activated like one-click shopping. So apparently, I bought it. I, I didn't mean to, and um, it was only like 20 bucks or something, so not that big of a deal. But uh, I kind of looked at it and then didn't think anything of it. A few days later, I got a shipping notification. I thought, oh, whoops. But anyways, so this year knife, uh, it's carbon. It kind of got got me thinking about a little quick discussion about knives in general. I'm surprised that Mora makes this out of carbon steel. This is designed more as a utility type knife. Now this one's gonna go in my tool belt, a knife that you keep in the shop, a chisel ground. Uh, obviously it means that one side is completely flat, there's no bevel on this side. This side, the only bevel is on one side of the knife. And this one actually has a chisel tip as well. So you could use this for a chisel, for cleaning up uh, wood, um, just a, a decent utility knife. Now there's no belly on it at all just a totally flat blade. So for a lot of tasks, this isn't gonna be ideal. But I decided to put this on my belt for a day and just kinda of see how I thought of it. And uh, I was cutting some bales open with our animals there and I already got rust on here because they made this one out of carbon steel and that kinda of surprises me because for a utility type knife like this, why wouldn't they do stainless? I'm wondering if it's because a decent carbon steel that has good edge retention characteristics is a lot less expensive a lot less heat treating work than a stainless steel. Now, the world famous uh, Mora Companion. Uh, this one is a stainless steel blade and a fantastic knife. I've had this one probably for three or four years. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. And you know, if you're in the market for a, a really good value uh, bushcraft knife, I don't know if you could go wrong with this one. This one's like 20 bucks. These are made in a factory. All these blades are probably stamped. They're clamped in a machine and ground. 
they come out really well. They they hold their edge well, even the stainless one. Now they don't they don't give any specs on the steel. Like this one just says carbon, but it doesn't tell you the type of carbon or, or the type of steel. This companion. Well, that just says stainless, but it doesn't tell you the type of stainless. And in the last several years, uh, I don't know how long, probably 10 or 15 years maybe, the stainless technology has come a long ways. It used to be if you wanted a really good knife that had a great edge retention characteristics, um, it needed to be carbon. You know, one of the better stainless knives you, you could get, stainless steels, was like 440, which by standards nowadays is, is very bottom, uh, very low end stainless steel. Um, I've got some like 154 cm, which is a little bit better than that, and then CPM 154, which is really good. But the heat treatment process on those is so much more work than just like a 1095, 1085, or an 01 tool steel. Um, and the reason that I, I mean, when you get into knife making, I think carbon steels, high carbon steels, are a lot easier to get into, uh, a lot easier to learn. You can heat treat them a lot easier. 01 is a very forgiving stool, um, tool steel in heat treat. But then I got an email from a gentleman that I had emailed a knife to and he emailed me yesterday just asking, you know, it's all one to it's tool steel, how do I look after it? And obviously keep it oiled. But I'm gonna show you this. This is a Bark River, a Bravo EDC blade. I did an initial kind of look video on this knife and I've had it for about two years, I think. And this has been like my regular carry knife. And a lot of people ask me, why do you carry somebody else's knife? And the reason for that is because I I wasn't making really great knives, good enough knives at the time, and I mean, I had bought this knife. You certainly can't get much for it if you go to sell it, so there's no point in trying to sell it. And if I have the knife and it's a good knife, I may as well just keep using it. So tons of people ask why don't I wear my own knives, and I do. When I'm out hunting and stuff, I do carry my own knives, knives that I make. But for around the homestead here, uh, from everyday tasks, this is usually the one that's on my belt. But one thing I'd like to point out is that after two years, it's got some wear on it. and. Even I've got these marks from, this was one of the first Kydex sheets I ever made and I didn't tape it like I showed in yesterday's video. But, um, so I'm getting some rubbing from the Kydex going in and out. But even beyond that, you can see it's getting a patina on it. You know, just wearing, even when you look after them properly, if you always keep them lubricated, you don't let them rust, they're still gonna develop a patina as you use them. And that's entirely fine. Like, that, that's just a characteristic of a knife. I like it because all those little markings and the little things that happen, they're all kind of part of the story of the blade. So that's one thing to think about, especially, I'll show you like right up in here. You see it got little spots there. It's not rust, but it's just a, the patina. That's what you call a patina. So just something to think about. I just want to throw in that little discussion about knives into this vlog. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Cheers. That was my seventh take.